Here are some of the stories we're following today. There are two new self-defense classes near MTSU so students can feel a little safer while on campus. And what will happen when one of your favorite social media sites starts charging? Find out here because EMC News 3 starts right now. Live from Studio 2 in the College of Mass Communications on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University, this is the News 3 Report. Thank you for joining us this Tuesday morning. I'm Ashley Butler. And I'm Kevin Mumphrey. Welcome to EMC News 3. We have breaking news of a murder in Columbia, Tennessee. Police are looking for two men who killed a Papa John's employee just before 10 p.m. last night. The victim told police before being taken to the hospital that two African-American males had robbed and shot him. Anyone with information about the shooting is asked to call the Columbia Police Department. For years, social media has been free, but free is about to change for users of one online phenomenon. I think it's a little outrageous. I've been using Facebook for a long time and I check it on a daily basis. In case you haven't heard, Facebook will start charging users with existing accounts $2.99 monthly. This all came about in late September but was confirmed today that a fee service plan must be added in order for Facebook to keep up with inflating expenses. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg told, spoke during a news conference rather regarding the issue. He says if we don't do something about our rising costs now, Facebook could face an unrecoverable financial burden and become obsolete. As of August, Facebook had about 1.3 billion users. They say if 75% of those users pay $3 per month, then cash influx, influx could total $36 billion. Although advertisements aren't profitably selling on the site as planned, costs are increasing by users continuing to join the site daily, putting Facebook in a position to no longer foot the bill. Some people think that this is a rumor, but charges are going into effect whether you like it or not. Users who don't want to pay a fee to use Facebook services are told to delete their accounts before November 1st. Is Tennessee becoming an abortion destination? News 3 reporter Jennifer Dudden has more on the controversial issue that is already on your ballot. <gasps> Amendment 1 is giving Tennesseans a rare opportunity to vote on abortion laws. Voting yes would change the state law to allow lawmakers to set new restrictions on abortion. Voting no would keep Tennesseans' current abortion laws in place. Some young mothers, Yay. like Erica Springer, are taking their time to research this heated topic, but think the wording of the amendment itself might confuse voters. I don't know what the actual bill is about. This is just what I've heard, what I've read. People are like, oh, that's going to make abortion illegal, even though it won't because federal law still is in place. But on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University, some students like Kavana West are trying to educate other students by presenting their opinion. I mean, I understand that some people aren't necessarily pro-life or pro-choice, but it's not about that. It's about rights. Who has the right to make this decision? And I think it should be a woman. Abortion critics have been fighting to put Amendment 1 on the ballot for 13 years. And some men, like Timothy Wheel, want to show students that this is an issue concerning all genders. If you have to go through a politician and say, hey, can I get this approved? That completely takes out your human rights and your human choices. There are many strong opinions, but whatever the outcome is, one thing is certain, this will be a historic moment in Tennessee. That was Jennifer Dunn reporting. If you want to get more information on Amendment 1, please visit Ballotpedia.org and search Tennessee Amendment 1. In response to recent violent crime, new self-defense classes are being promoted to keep college kids safe. Bushido School of Karate is holding a free self-defense class for ladies uh, on August, October 25th. And the Campus Rec Center offers classes every week for students. Some students think the accessibility of classes to MTSU is a plus. The threats are, are kind of everywhere, you know, and you have to be able to react to an environment a certain way, and you shouldn't naturally assume that it's going to be violent per se, but you should have the understanding that it could turn that way. And um, I think it's a, a great idea for any woman, you know, on campus or off campus to have, you know, accessibility to learning how to defend themselves, um, especially with everything that's going on today in society. 
both Bushido's class and the campus rec center uh, classes are free to students. Police may have found the missing remains of missing student Hannah Graham. Chesterfield County Sheriff's Office found what they believe to be human remains near, near Old Lynchburg Road about noon Saturday. Forensic investigators will, in Richmond will have to conduct tests to confirm the remains. Graham was last heard from September 13th when she sent a text message to a friend while at a bar. Early voting is underway in Rutherford County and some people are taking advantage of the opportunity to avoid lines and cast their votes. But back here at MTSU, students don't know much about what they should be voting on. But while I don't know is because I haven't been paying too much attention because of school, honestly. I've heard about them, but I haven't really looked into it too much. I've, I've heard about Amendment 1 and all that, but I don't really know too much about it now. Let's be realistic. My vote's not going to matter. Second off, I don't, I will be sitting in my farm and I won't really care about the politics. But one student is aware of the importance of voting. Are you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Do you think Frosted Flakes are more than good, they're great? Well, the Stones River Mall might just be the place for you. News 3's Jeremy Cox is about to let you know where you can get your breakfast cereal fix. Inside the Stones River Mall food court, Cereal Junkie has recently opened and has customers grabbing their bowls and spoons. After being inspired by his children's love for cereal, Chad warned staff along with his wife Mia opened the store to give mall shoppers a family-friendly dining option. You know, I kind of rolled over after waking up one night in bed about a month and a half ago and said, hey, I have an idea. And she said, okay, what is it? And we discussed it and kind of started working on it the next week. Cereal Junkie offers a wide selection of 30 cereals as well as coffee, ice cream, and more. Customers can serve themselves choosing their bowl size, toppings, and choice of milk. Although Cereal Junkie seems like a novel idea, they may have to change the perception of most residents of Murfreesboro because most of them say they like to enjoy their cereal right from home. Uh, I'm a big cereal fan, but I mean, all the cereals I have, I eat you know, at home. And honestly, I haven't even heard about it until just now. <laughs> it's going all right. It's, it's a little slow at the mall here, but word hasn't quite got out yet. So we're still waiting on that to happen. So if you're a frequent shopper at Stones River Mall, you might want to stop by for a sweet treat and spread the word. Reporting for MTSU News 3, I'm Jeremy Cox. The owners of Cereal Junkie are looking for a new location. Where, you ask? right here at MTSU. For more information, you can visit Cereal Junkie at, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Burrow Cereal Junkie. Well, Kevin, you know, I've been a little cold lately. I know it's getting a little colder for our fall season. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I keep a, keep a coat in the car, and just in case rain, keep the umbrella in the trunk. Well, we have Jasmine here with us that's going to give us a little bit about our weather situation. That's right, Ashley and Kevin. It was a bit chilly this morning, but now our current conditions, we're sitting pretty at 70 degrees, and it feels like 70 degrees outside. We have a precipitation of 0%, meaning there is no sprinkle in the sky, and there's no clouds either. We're clear of sky, uh, clouds, too. Our winds are northwest and 5 miles per hour, meaning just a little bit. Shuffle up the leaves a little bit while we're outside looking at the beautiful fall colors of the leaves but we will be this way until the end of the day it will warm up pretty much the main course of the day our sunrise was at 6 58 a.m this morning and our sunset will be at 602 p.m if you stay tuned i will have more of your seven day outlook for the rest of the week back to you at the news desk still to come on emc news 3 a new walmart is opening in murfreesboro this week and a place in town is helping kids in a special way. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov business. When you throw away money on wasted electricity,
you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Get your GED Pep Talk and find free classes at yourged.org. First steps, first words, and maybe a little bit of divine intervention. There's one place in Murfreesboro that's helping kids in a special way. News 3's reporter Emily Kinzer takes us inside the Christian-based organization that's using their faith to change lives. Kevin, Special Kids started 16 years ago, and they've seen a lot of growth throughout the years. They serve children from birth to 21 years of age, and there's one little girl who is making great strides. Kim? Good job! This is Quinn. She's one of many Special Kids here. She started coming to Special Kids the first time she walked was here. She gets her therapy in a special way, by playing. She's progressed and getting better every time, and she's just uh, coming right along. Coloring, playing basketball, and the wheelbarrow walk down the hall. To her, it seems like fun, but it's helping in more ways than she realizes. There you go. Keep going, Quinn. Color all those white spots. But kids, like Quinn, aren't the only ones being helped. For me personally, it's an amazing blessing. Um, one of our staff members has said, you know, we think we're here to help the kids when really they're the ones that help us. It's seeing the progress in the kids that brings joy to the staff, but it's the play that keeps the kids wanting to come back. We'll, we'll ask her if we're ready to go to kids and she's ready to go to kids and she'll, she's always wanting to come. And the kids aren't the only ones growing here. This growth in this ministry really is a dream come true, and it really is after years of praying and a very faithful board and staff to seek what was next for special kids. Can I get a high five? Thank you. Oh, that was even better. Now, Special Kids opened their new 7,000 square foot facility just last month. This means more than square footage for them. It means it's an even greater chance to reach out to more people. Kevin? Thanks, Emily. For more information on Special Kids, visit specialkidstn.com. Murfreesboro and Walmart seem to go well together as they will be opening a third Walmart this week. The 17-acre lot, which is located on Memorial Boulevard, will open its doors to the public Wednesday morning after a brief ceremony. While locals around the area have complained about the potential of increased traffic around the area, Walmart officials insist that the new Walmart will only give shoppers close to an, a closer op, close by an option closer to home. The new location will employ more than 300 associates in the upcoming months. Potential employees can apply at the store or at Walmart's website. There's a little bit of color added to the square this month. When the sun goes down, the lights go up in support of Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Booker County is going purple in support of the cause. City Hall and businesses all around the square are celebrating the month by displaying purple ribbons and bows on their doors. The 15th annual Rutherford County Walk to End Alzheimer's is scheduled for October 25th. If you would like to see the purple displays, City, City Hall will glow until November, October 31st. A state senator has been arrested twice in one weekend. 
It's been a bad few months for Senator Jim Somerville, who was arrested over the weekend just one month after he was arrested for public intoxication. The Dixon senator has been charged with stalking and assault in an incident involving a neighbor. Somerville was arrested again on Saturday on assault charges after leaving jail and allegedly threatening his neighbor. Somerville resigned from the Republican caucus following a loss in the August election and now serves as an independent for the remainder of his term. Okay, look at this beautiful photo that we took earlier this morning. It's a very beautiful picture, very sunny, no clouds in the sky. You have a few people walking and sitting in the area and it's just very pretty today and it will get warmer as we move along today. Right now we're still sitting pretty at 70 degrees with no precipitation. Winds northeast five miles per hour. I will have more weather for you coming up next on MC News 3. There's a lot of jobs coming to Murfreesboro this upcoming season. And hockey is making its mark in Nashville. Stay with us because that's up next. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, uh -oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Jack Frost, you do have beautiful teeth. My, my what? Are they really as white as they say? Yes! <gasps> oh, they really do sparkle like freshly fallen snow. This is an excellent example of what teeth should look like. Check out the iridescence of that incisor. The beauty of that bicuspid. The magnificence of those molars. <laughs> and the best way to achieve such terrific teeth is brushing. Two minutes, twice a day. Not 30 seconds, not a minute 45. Two minutes! That's all it takes. They're beautiful. With the holiday season quickly approaching, Amazon is looking for more people to hire. Amazon announced they will be creating 80,000 seasonal jobs this holiday season. And while the jobs may be seasonal, it also gives people the chance for full-time employment. Amazon in the past has converted thousands of seasonal workers to regular full-time employees and are expecting to do, to do the same this year. Between Murfreesboro and Lebanon, Amazon employs more than 5,000 employees. If you're looking to apply, just go on Amazon's website for more information. And we're gonna have another look from Jasmine for our weather forecast today. Jasmine? That's right, we're still sitting pretty at 70 degrees today, and we will have no precipitation throughout the day. It will be a very, very pretty day to hang out in the sitting area in front of the library. Our headlines today, partly cloudy, chilly, cold nights and warm afternoons. In the morning and cold, tonight, you may wanna grab a jacket because it will be very, very cold. And warm afternoons, I mean, we're talking about 70, five degrees, it will be very beautiful. Okay, current conditions. Um, right now we're in, Nash in Nashville, we're seeing 68 degrees, Murfreesboro 68, Manchester 67, Columbia 68, Waverly 70 degrees, a little bit on the nippy side, Waynesboro 70 degrees, and a little patchy fog in between the interstate highway areas. In Lafayette, 65 degrees, 
and a little patchy fog as well over there. And as you can also see in Cookville, 64 degrees. This is our extended forecast for the week. Right now we are at Wednesday. Wednesday there will be 0% chance of rain with a 63 degree high and 39 low. Thursday, 0% of precipitation with a few clouds coming in the area at 65 degrees are high and 45 low. Friday, you have partly cloudy, but sun peeking in through here and there. 69 degrees is the high, 45 is the low. Saturday, all sunny skies throughout the whole weekend until Monday and Tuesday with chances of rain 0%, and we will be getting higher into the temperatures in the next upcoming week. You may want to wear a jacket as we continue this week through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because it will be a little nippy in the mornings. But in the afternoon, okay, our microcast radar right now, we have a few clouds in between the Nashville, Middle Tennessee area. You have Chattanooga sitting pretty, just a little cloud cover. And then as you see, Above in Kentucky and up there, we have a little precipitation, but it will not be moving in the Nashville area anytime soon, but we will be having pretty weather. This image was taken, it's very pretty. You can see the beautiful fall colors on the tree in front of the Honors College building here on campus. You can also visit our website, MT10 News, to find more information and more about our weather. And also go on Facebook to like us on Facebook and more information will be provided there on the page. I'll take you back to the news desk. Back to you, Kevin and Ashley. Thanks, Jasmine. Local teams were in action this weekend. Find out who won and who lost coming up on News 3. And MTSU is planning a lot of events for the upcoming holiday, Halloween holiday. That's up next. Brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, brush your teeth. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. If you're looking for a fun new friend, what a day. Shelters are the best places to find one. You don't say. Uh-huh. There, you'll discover healthy, happy, loving animals. Nothing but the best. Waiting to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. We'll always be the best of friends. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Nashville is accustomed to being in the spotlight, but earlier, but early in 2016, the international spotlight will be a little unfamiliar. The 2016 NHL All-Star Celebration will be held in Nashville at this magnificent Bridgestone Arena. Last Friday at around 11 a.m. in the bowels of Bridgestone Arena, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman officially announced that the city of Nashville would host the 2016 NHL All-Star Weekend. In either late January or early February of 2016, the eyes of the hockey world will be on Nashville 
as the best players on the planet will converge for the weekend's festivities. As I said, we knew from the outset we wanted to be here. It was really a question of finding the right opportunity. While the event will obviously boost hockey in the mid-state, the city also stands to receive a huge profit. From an economic standpoint, I've heard estimates of give or take uh, $10 million in economic impact immediately, whether it's, it's people going to restaurants, staying in hotels, traveling into town. Based on numbers from the last two hosts of the event, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Columbus, Ohio, Nashville is looking at making at least $12 million in revenue over the four-day festivities. The city is also looking at over $50 million of media exposure on an international level. I'm standing in Bridgestone Arena where NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman just announced that the city of Nashville and the Nashville Predators will host the 2016 NHL All-Star Game. With the recent openings of the Music City Center and Ford Ice Center, Nashville has more than enough space to entertain the tens of thousands of hockey-crazed fans that will descend on the city. Nashville is a great city and it knows how to host big events and we're thrilled to have the opportunity to come here. Joining Commissioner Bettman for the announcement was Nashville Mayor Carl Dean, Predator CEO Jeff Kogan, various Predator staff, and even Country Music Hall of Famer Vince Gill. For MTSU News 3, I'm Jonathan Birchfield. Nashville hosted the 2003 NHL Draft and will become the third straight first-time host for the All-Star event. So how about them Blue Raiders last weekend? <laughs> right, I couldn't agree more with you. Homecoming and a win. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, to now we have more um, from Jonathan Birchfeld with this weekend's sports. After back-to-back -back weeks of upsets across the board in college football, the landscape stabilized a little this weekend. It was homecoming here at MTSU as the Blue Raiders hosted UAB. Reggie Watley paced the Blue Raiders on the ground with 100 yards rushing and a score. Austin Grammer added two touchdowns through the air, leading MTSU to a 34-21 win over the Blazers. On to the NFL, where the Titans fans are embracing the campaign for Suck for the Duck in hopes of drafting Oregon quarterback Marcus Mariota. This week, the Titans traveled to the nation's capital to play the Redskins. Washington's third-string quarterback Colt McCoy came on in relief of Kurt Cousins and rallied the Skins to a last-second game-winning field goal by Kay Forbath to give Washington the 19-17 victory. On the ice, the Nashville Predators were in Chicago to measure themselves against their division rival. The Blackhawks struck early behind a Johnny Odoya goal to make it 1-0 until Shea Weber tied it on a power play goal late in the first. The game stayed tied through the second and the third periods until Blackhawks captain Jonathan Taves netted the game winner in overtime, giving Chicago the 2-1 win. The Detroit Red Wings played a home-and-home -home this weekend against Toronto, and Detroit swept the Maple Leafs to pick up four of possible four points. Johan Franz's two goals and Henrik Zetterberg's four assists paced Detroit to a 4-1 win in the first game in Toronto. The second game had saw fewer fireworks as the two teams were tied going into overtime until Henrik Zetterberg ripped a shot over Bernier's shoulder to give the Red Wings a 1-0 overtime win. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jonathan Birchall. Back to the desk. Thank you. Um, Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ashley Butler. And I'm Kevin Mumphrey. Join us next week for EMC News 3. Until then, have a good week.